So now we're up to the year 1952. And this is an important year because it really coalesces the, the dawn of a new phenomenon, a new way of playing the drums, and that involves double bass. Now many of us here in the 21st century think that the double bass phenomenon is like a new thing that goes along with music that's currently contemporary today, you know, heavy rock, metal. Uh, but actually, double bass has a really long and interesting history, and that history really can be attributed to the legendary drummer Louis Belson. Now, Louis Belson was a, a swing era drummer. He was a big band drummer, started his career uh, in the late 1930s with the Benny Goodman Orchestra as a young man. He was the winner of the Gene Krupa Drum Contest. Remember, we talked about Gene Krupa earlier. Krupa actually sponsored a nationwide drum contest. This is years and years before certain music stores sponsor their big nationwide drum offs today. Uh, same idea. You'd have, you know, regional contests, and then you'd have a, a winner who was the best drummer in the whole country. And the, and the winner of the very first Gene Krupa Drum Contest was Louis Belson. And, and Louis Belson was a tinkerer. He's a fantastic drummer. But he, in, he thought, well, what if I brought a second bass drum into this thing? And already in high school, he has some diagrams that he, he actually showed me uh, from Woodshop, where he was designing the idea of a second bass drum. So when he became a professional, he started integrating a second bass drum into his setup. Double bass really made its first big splash when Louis Belson joined Duke Ellington's orchestra in the early 50s. And he was also, in addition to being a great drummer, Louis was a prolific songwriter. And he wrote his own song called Skin Deep that's on the very famous Duke Ellington album, Ellington Uptown. And Skin Deep was a feature for the double bass drums. He also wrote another song called The Hawk Talks, which uh, he also performed with Duke Ellington. And uh, in both of these, these were really the first recordings where double bass could clearly be heard, where it was clearly featured, and it just exploded. And because of that, you have drummers in the 50s and into the 60s, all of whom who used double bass, and of course that led to the double bass style that we have today. Here's a short demonstration that sort of pays a little bit of tribute to one of my favorite drummers and favorite people, Louis Belson. tell me what made a drum set a drum set.
The low boy. Kick pedal. Match grip. The sock symbol. My name is Daniel Glass. I'm a drummer, author, and educator. In 1994, I joined a band called Royal Crown Review. We were trying to figure out how to take the rebellious spirit of modern styles like punk and put it into big band and other roots music. We found out it was already there. I've been absorbed in this world ever since. I started researching the evolution of the drum set and the way that we play it. In the last dozen years, I've interviewed more than 60 different legendary drummers. I came to a startling conclusion. Perhaps more than any other instrument, the drum set is equipped to tell the story of America and American music. All of these immigrants coming from around the world brought their technology. Jazz music and pop music were one and the same. You could dance to it. 